When developers start building apps, authentication is usually one of the first things that they start to look into adding into their application. And that authentication usually looks like an email password combination, maybe a sign in with Google, sign in with Apple, or lately logging in with a phone number or logging in with a magic link is also super popular. But recently I stumbled upon something called anonymous users that I think is actually a huge growth hack. And in my opinion, is going to really accelerate a lot of apps growths. And it's something that I'm adding into all of my applications as we speak. Now, what exactly is anonymous? anonymous users. Just to start off, when you go to like an e-commerce website, right? Like you're trying to buy something from a Shopify store. Let's say you add something to cart and then you disappear from that website. And then maybe the next day or a couple hours later, you go back and you go to that website and you see that your cart state is still preserved. And the way that they do that is by creating an anonymous user for you. So essentially this creates an authenticated profile for you, but you don't have it necessarily linked to another email address or another permanent way of coming back to log in every single time. And that's what anonymous users do. It allows users to experience the full functionality of your application without having to necessarily create an account, link it to an email, phone number, whatever that may be. And once again, I am not an expert product builder. I'm still a beginner, but I am somebody that has built like over 14 different apps in the past three years. So I do know the lay of the land of what it's like to go out and build product. And I think anonymous users can really accelerate growth and help get a lot more users into your funnel to end up using your product, maybe sign up and create an account and maybe eventually becoming a paying customer. Now, let me walk you through a quick demo of what an anonymous user looks like from another product that I did not build. And then I'll show you how I incorporated it into my product as well. So a great example of an anonymous user is this website right here, chatpdf.com. It's one of the very first chat PDF tools. They are a huge, huge product. I think they're doing like multiple millions of revenues for a year. I think like two, three, four million. That's what I last heard word on the street. And then when you go and look into this chat PDF landing page, you see right there immediately it says upload a PDF and you can chat with it. So why don't we try that out? So I have a PDF somewhere here, an old resume that I think I had back in college or something. I'm uploading it, it's processing it, and immediately I can start chatting with it. But what's really interesting is if you look at it over here, I am not logged in. It says sign in for free to save your chat history. But despite me not having an account, not logging in, I am still able to ask questions with it and have a full experience with the chat. PDF software without having to create an account and log in, which, you know, it is a little bit of friction. It's not a ton of friction, but it is still a little bit of friction in your user acquisition funnel. And that's the reason why I think anonymous users are so powerful as feature in your application. It allows users to have a faster, what I like to call time to value TTV of whatever you're trying to build and hopefully expedited TTV process. They will eventually actually sign up for your product and then maybe become a paying user down the pipeline. And I know the authentication step is really small, but hey, any step in terms of the funnel optimization at large volumes is going to pay its dividends. So I've started incorporating anonymous users into the applications that I build. And this is a recent application called perfectinterview.ai. It's essentially an AI powered interview prepping software for any job in the world. The way that it works is that people can upload any job description, company description, and then their resume, any of their background experience. And then using all this information, we generate practice interview questions, custom tailored to their work experience and the job that they're applying for. And then they also can go through mock interviews with these questions as well. It's a second product that I'm building at the same time along with my other software tool, Monty.ai, for those of you that keep up with the channel. And actually real ones know I actually built this product one year ago and I'm bringing it back to life. But you know, that's like insider knowledge, you know, essentially the way that I'm incorporating into it is I took a ton of inspiration from chat PDF. If you go back to chat PDF, also you can see the anonymous user is still persisting the previous documents I uploaded on the side over here, despite me not having an account. So if you do a side by side comparison of chat PDF and perfect interview, you can see that there's a ton of inspiration, you have the sidebar here. And then if you go and look at the landing page itself, I see the landing page, I demonstrate the value proposition to the user. And at the very end, users can enter in any job title description that they want, and they can create practice interview questions right then and there. So why don't we do that? So let's just get a random job from Google, let me show you this experience, copy this the job title, whoops, the job description, and then I paste it there. As you can see, 
I do not have an account at all. I'm not signed in. I've not done any authentication process, but despite that, I'm still able to experience the software by going out and creating these interview questions myself and getting to experience what the software product is like. And then by expediting this process of the time to value, I can see the value of the product more quickly without having to go through and make an account and maybe I'll end up becoming a paying user down the line. All right, so I just finished the process of creating the interview prep questions. And as you can see, the job was created over here in my application and perfect interview before showing the practice questions that was generated for the user. I do tell them to sign up by entering in their email, but you know, I might actually remove that looking back at this. Now it seems like it might be a better experience, a faster time to value if I don't have to force users to link their account to it. But as you can see, every time I refresh the page, the job that I created is still up here in the top left hand corner, yet the user has not created an account. Now I know over here, I have been praising about how great anonymous users are and how I think they're super powerful, but that's not to say that there aren't any downsides to it. The number one biggest downside of anonymous users is the fact that you could get a lot of users who sign up and never end up coming back to their product. Maybe they end up, you know, losing any of the progress that they created before because, you know, like any authentication service, it will be able to persist for a certain period of time, but then eventually their refresh token for the authentication service might expire. And then in that case, the users lose their progress forever and they're unable to access it again because they never signed up for an account to save their progress. Another drawback with anonymous users is also the fact that you are subject to a lot of spam because essentially anyone that let's say creates, in my case, this job, this custom job interview prep, essentially theoretically anyone can use like a script or a scraper or a bot to, to do this and trigger this flow and it could blow up the number of authenticated users in my service, which is done via Superbase. Superbase is a service that I'm using to support the anonymous users and it could blow up the number of users that I had in my database. Now, the way that I combated against that is the fact that I did add like a captcha using Cloudflare's turnstile product, which is basically like a modern capture replacement to do any type of bot detection. You know, it's this little UI component right there, hoping that can prevent any bots from really destroying my website. Please be nice to me. I'm begging you hackers out there in the world. Do not do anything crazy to my website. I'm just trying to be a good guy out here, please. I'm just trying to build for fun. But that is definitely a huge drawback because it does theoretically put your website at risk. But I'm hoping a good workaround for that is using a captcha tool like Cloudflare Turnstile or HCAPTCHA to avoid any potential bad actors out there. And then the last downside is the fact that theoretically, some users may never link their account to an email address. And then if you are really keen on doing a lot of email marketing, for example, you lose out on that valuable email address to retarget them and send them marketing email. But in my opinion, despite all of the potential downsides that come with anonymous users, I think it's really powerful. It removes a huge potential blocking page of your users onboarding process in that user funnel, and it pushes it way, way later into the funnel. And instead, it pushes up the time for them to be able to experience that software really quickly, see the value that it provides. And then hopefully, if your product is good enough, that can faster that a user sees the value of the product and the less barriers that you put in the user's way of experiencing your software, maybe they can end up becoming a paid user more quickly. So that is one of the favorite features that I have recently stumbled across. I'm a big, big fan of the anonymous users. I'm adding them to my applications. I already have it here for perfectinterview.ai, planning to add it for monty.ai maybe later on as well. But yeah, let me know what you think about the anonymous users. Are you a fan of them? Have you used them before? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments down below. Curious to hear your take.